Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So if you watch my channel, or you're watching this video, you're aware of the switch kit. All right, it turns your bike into an e-bike. And this is my wife's bike with the switch kit on it. And we love it. You can watch my other videos. Um, I recently made a video about why I'm not upgrading to the new smaller battery. And without going into those details again, common complaints about the existing kit are that it's heavy on the handlebars and that you have to take your hand off the handlebars to use the controls. Well, this is a generation two switch bike. This is also a switch bike. Let's take a look at the differences. All right, so what are the differences between my wife's bike now, generation two, and my bike, generation two? Well, you'll see there's no more battery on my handlebars. In fact, I've mounted the battery back behind the seat. It's worked out pretty well. And now I've got a very uncluttered and unweighted handlebar. I've got my gear shift indicator back where, back where it belongs. And now I have the ability to put a headlight on there. But the coolest thing at all, of all is my controls are now located where I can reach them without removing my hands from the handlebars. I think this is really cool. I just finish it. Let's take a look at what it takes to do this. So here's our bikes in the corner of the garage in my sophisticated homemade storage system. So if we're thinking about relocating our switch, first thing we need to do is get the mount off the handlebars. So. I have gone ahead, cut a couple of my cable ties. I unplugged the motor controller. I unplugged my thumb throttle. And we are going to remove them out and then take a look at what our options are. All right, so since I'm reconfiguring things, I've removed, I've removed my shifter and my brake assembly. And I'm taking off the thumb throttle because it just don't use that as much as I anticipated. And then where are we gonna put the battery if we don't put it on the back? Well, the easiest thing that I found is, is I'm mounting mine right on the seat post. And I think that's gonna work out pretty cool. Uh, I might not leave it there, I might change this a little bit, but right now it's a convenient, solution and let's take a look with the battery on there and here we are with the battery mounted so now you've got the weight on the back instead of on the handlebars and it's a little bit more in my opinion innocuous looking and i'm going to use the little cover that came with this to keep the uh, road debris off the battery so the next question is well chris your motor cable is too short and all the controls are on the back. What do you do about that? Let's take a look. All right, so with the battery mounted behind the seat, you can't get at the controls, which is a little bit of a problem. So what most people don't realize is this is not just the battery. In this thing is the batteries, the little controller, and the motor controller. And if you haven't noticed, it's got this little flap on it. So you can fold the flap up and then open up this zipper. And then when you open the top, on the inside is your little controller. And this comes out. So you can just kind of grab it in the plastic here. And there it is. And luckily, it's got a cable with a connector on it. And with a little bit of muscle, you can disconnect. So in theory, if we were to mount this on the handlebar and we had a longer cable, we'd be good to go. Now the problem with that, these little connectors, <clears throat> I have been unable to find. Now I didn't do a lot of searching. Um, but I did some, and while it's easy to find 
these larger connectors. This is a, what they call an e-bike extension cable because most e-bikes are using the same type of connector. Now this is a five pin. If you know anything about electronics, this is something similar to a DIN, can I, uh, DIN connector. Uh, however, the internal one is a lot smaller. So I couldn't find a small cable to use as an extension. So, and I also can't find the connectors by themselves. And I, I'm guessing the reason for that is there's not a lot of uses for this outside of a little pack. This is a little bit thinner. So the question becomes, all right, how do you make this longer? So really, we're gonna have to do a little bit of surgery here. I'm gonna open this up, take a look inside and see how this is connected. I really have two options. I've got two of these cables. One is gonna be sacrificial. So I am either gonna open this up and solder the male end of this right to the printed circuit board, which I don't think I'm gonna do because I'm, I'm gonna guess that it's probably uh, gonna be a little bit tight in there. Or I'm gonna cut this cable and I'm gonna cut this cable. And I'm gonna splice in the ends from this one and then I'm gonna use another one as the extension. So let's take a look and see how that goes. All right, now I know I said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. If you're gonna do this, this is certainly going to void your warranty. If you're not comfortable with fooling with electronics, I don't recommend you try to do this yourself. So I have taken out the two, four, six, the eight tiny Phillips screws that hold this little control thing together. If you've ever worked on replacing a battery on a phone, the little tiny screwdrivers they give you work out great for that. And then once you take those screws out, you open this up. These are just tactile switches. And surprisingly, there's a relatively complicated printed circuit board in here. <laughs> and I'm laughing because if you know the YouTuber I just stole that move from, leave me a comment and uh, I, do, I do watch his channel. Um, so I'm not gonna try to take these wires off of this board, too small, don't wanna do that. Uh, however, I did wanna see that the wires inside this are color-coded. And I can see by looking at it that they are, which tells me when I cut this, and there's no going back once I cut it, I should be able to splice in my other connector. So let's take a look at doing that. Okay, so as you can see, I cut the male end off of my sacrificial cable. And using an X-Acto knife, I carefully strip back the jacket to expose the five color coated wires on the inside. So this tells me that this is gonna be viable. I know these are color coded and so now I've got to do the same thing with this and with this. And once I do this, there's no going back, but I want to get this done. So off with its head. Now I've got to be very careful and I'm going to cut this and carefully strip it back a little bit. And when you do that, you gotta be really careful that you don't cut too deep. And this jacket is actually a little bit thicker than the one that I just cut. Yellow, black, red, green, blue. So same color coding. So I'm gonna strip this back a little bit more. We are going to solder these together, put some heat shrink tubing on it, and then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, so here we are a couple of minutes later. I have very carefully cut and stripped the wire on both sides. Now, if you're gonna do this, these wires on the controller, even the wires on the cable, these are tiny. 
Um, I've got this old pair. This is the smallest pair of diagonal cutters I have. These are old and uh, my wire strippers only go to 22 gauge. So I had to very carefully, I stripped a couple on the cable using this with a steady hand and I just carefully used my X-Acto knife to do these. And now I'm gonna marry them up color to color and I'm gonna solder them together and I'm not gonna, I've got a piece of heat shrink tubing on here already and then I'm gonna put a little piece of electrical tape on each connection. But I'm gonna leave it open until I do both ends and test it. And the reason for that, one thing I did not do was check the pin configuration from one cable to the other, from the smaller one to the bigger one. I'm gonna assume that it's the same. I could have buzzed it out with a uh, with a with my voltmeter on continuity mode, but I didn't. So I'm gonna assume red to red, blue to blue, blah blah blah, all the way through. And when I'm all done, it's gonna work. So I got my soldering iron here, heating up, ready to go. And uh, we're gonna put this together, and then we're gonna do the other end, and then see if we can make a little magic happen. So stay tuned. All right, so we've got one side done and I'm gonna tape it up and heat shrink it after I test this. And then I've got my other cable stripped and ready to go. And then the same thing on the one that goes to the battery. Now, if you're gonna try this yourself, remember this is connected to the live system. So unplug the battery before you start fooling with this cable. And again, these wires are super, super tiny. And if my camera will focus, you really can't tell, but they're, they're probably 24 gauge or maybe even smaller. Just be really, really careful working on these things. All right, so here we are. My original intent was to do all of that cutting and splicing and then with everything untaped, do my first little test here. And then I realized lithium ion battery, you know, not good having these connections open when everything is live. So you can see I taped everything up and I'm gonna tighten, I'm gonna just clean that up a little bit, assuming everything works. But here we are now, battery is back connected. I've got my cable in the middle, so this can go basically anywhere I need it to go. And the bottom line is, does it still work? Cross your fingers. Look at that. Excellent. All right, let's get this all buttoned up. All right, so finally, here's the finished product. Ready to go on the bike. We can unplug it when we need to, uh, to take the battery on and off. And I put a couple of zip ties around the shrink wrap here just to try to keep any water out and hopefully after putting it all back together hey, it still works Let's see if we can still turn the light on uh, how do you turn the light on beautiful all right so that being said, we need a way to mount this to the handlebar and we'll put this on the bike. We're filming in the garage today because all of a sudden it's winter. So in its normal form now, the motor controller isn't gonna make it to the hub motor. So what do you do about that? Well, luckily I went onto Amazon and I found this nine pin extension cable and I'm gonna put a link to this cable in the uh, in the video description but it's pretty straightforward and if I could see what I was doing here I can line up the arrows and now we're gonna make it so we're gonna zip tie that in place and the other thing we've got to do is reroute the pedal sensor so instead of coming up this frame tube, we're just gonna come right up this one. And we've gotta move the controls from the back of the battery to somewhere on the front of the bike. 
So let's get these cables out of the way first. All right, so with that all set, motor connected, pedal sensor connected, let's figure out how we mount the battery on the back and be able to control it from the front. All right, so after all of that, here's our battery on the back, here's our cable, which is plenty long enough, and here's our controller. Look at that, we can turn it on. And since we've done all of that, maybe we should see if we can figure out if it works. So if I lift up the front, turn the pedals, works that's a good sign so to mount this I decided I took the reflector off of the back to mount this took the mount off the reflector I'm gonna mount this on the back and mount it on the handlebar and I'm gonna do that using these super cool 3m picture hanger hooks these things are really really strong I like velcro but better so let's just do that quickly and wrap this cable, and then we'll be ready to do a test drive. All right, guys, we're going to do a little test ride. All set. The GoPro is going to be on my head. So hopefully you'll be able to see what we're doing. But the bottom line is, does it actually work? Quick little lap around the driveway. Oh, and there's that lovely boost. All right. Can control it from right here. That's handy. Look at that. All right, let's go down the road. And as you can see, I've now got fingertip control. It's a little chilly. Everything is working. And we are going to call that a success. Well, guys, that's going to do it for today. I think this project came out pretty cool. If you like it, do me a favor and uh, like. And if you're not subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you do. Thanks for watching.